Good evening and welcome to the next issue. Tonight we're going to discuss one of the most important works of the past century, and that is Bazooka Joe. Now Bazooka Joe has been discontinued along with many of our hopes and dreams. Tonight I'd like to take a look at five issues of this. All right, so in this first comic we got Bazooka Joe. He's comforting his friend Mort. He says, what's wrong Mort? And last night I dreamed I was eating a giant marshmallow, Mort says, and Bazooka Joe says so, and and Mort says so, when I woke up this morning, my pillow was gone. Now, this is a normalizing uh, pica, which is a very, very uh, strange disorder in which people eat things they are not supposed to eat. Um, you know, some people eat paper, they eat sand, and in the case of Paul Mort, he eats his pillow. Now, I just think it's wonderful that they've gone to take the stigma away from this horrible disorder that so many people suffer in silence. and. I just commend Bazooka Joe for, again, normalizing it and showing others that they are not alone. Now, this is a high-quality issue for several reasons. Uh, first of all, it includes Batman, and that automatically legitimizes it. Um, it apparently has a send away for Batarang as well, which teaches children self-defense. So again, this one is geared to the younger audience. Uh, hey Joe, I think we're going to have a history quiz today, says a little bald-headed kid. And, and gosh, I forgot to do my history homework last night. And many, many young people are in this situation. Batman appears, as he does. Uh, Joe, in what battle did General Wolf say, I die happy? And Joe to his great astonishment, knows the answer, and he says it is his last. Now, this shows that superheroes can also help students with school, and it shows that they are building the future of America because they are appearing when they could be committing acts of violence. Instead, they are appearing and helping these children who are simply trying to learn. So this issue, this third issue we're going to take a look at is about self-reflection and really self-actualization. Um, we've got the man that says, I can go steady with any girl I please, and he's covered his mouth in a turtleneck, which symbolizes his insecurity, despite what he says on the surface. And uh, Joe says, why don't you then? And the man in the turtleneck says, I don't please anybody. Now, on the surface, this one seems very sad, but the reality is the, the red turtleneck man is very, very self-actualized at a very young age. And although he's covering his mouth, he's doing it in a way that shows that he can still see these women. He can still look at them. He's still aware that they exist. He just knows that it would not be within his best interest to speak to them. And I think that shows a great deal of maturity for someone his age. Now, now here's another issue that has some very practical life advice. Uh, Joe says, yesterday I took Val to Burger World for dinner, but after the date, she wouldn't let me kiss her goodnight. Um, what do you think you did wrong, his friend says. And Joe says, I ordered onion rings. Now, there are a few things happening here. First of all, we have the issue of consent, which Joe has obviously consented to not kissing her. Um, she did not wish to kiss him because of his breath. And he was aware of that, and he accepted it, and he moved on. And that was the end of it. And it was very well done. It was very well done on his part. It also shows that... You must choose your food very carefully. Like, when you're going on a date, you must be aware of your teeth. You must bring a toothbrush. You must slip into the restroom and, and give it a little scrub. Your teeth, I mean. So, uh, this, this works on two ways. This works in two ways. It shows, just in the four tiny frames, it gives two very practical pieces of life advice. It's one more issue. Um, we've got a magician on stage. He says, can I have a small boy from the audience? Uh, young man, have you ever seen me before? He says to the little boy, he volunteers. And the little boy says, no, dad. And on the surface, it seems like a nice little mix-up, uh, just for fun and for giggles. But if you take a look, there's a little hidden message. If you look down below the final panel, things are not always what they seem. Look beneath the surface. I find myself riveted by the plight of the little boy who bravely went to this magic show, not knowing if he'd be called on to volunteer, but just knowing, knowing in his heart of hearts that his father would be there. Even though he's become a vagrant, a gypsy, a trickster, he's still his father, and he knows that deep down somewhere, he still loves his son.
Thank you so much for joining me this evening as I revisit this brilliant, brilliant series. And although Bazooka Joe is no longer in circulation, it is our hope and our dream that the socio-political commentary that came out of each issue will live on in the hearts and actions of the gum-chewing populace. Thank you again for joining us, and have a lovely night. That's why I buy Bazooka Joe gum. It's like chewing a mountain that someone shot a freeze ray into. What's wrong with this country?